Julia, now that you've had a little bit of time to kind of look back at your first season in the WNBA, what was maybe that first, like, I finally arrived moment or the moment that really stood out to you the most uh, during your first season? I don't know. I think I have, like, lots of different moments. Um, I think that this season was crazy, like, uh, in a good and bad way. Um, so I don't know what I have to think about it. I just... I'm just so happy and so grateful to be able to be on the court and to play against the best players in the world. That's something that I will never uh, forget. Like that was a a crazy season. Um, I didn't expect to play that much. So, you know, when you think about it, it's just so, I'm just so happy about it because in the beginning I wasn't sure to come uh, because, you know, with the COVID, with what was happening in the USA, I was like, well, I'm not sure. Uh, I was really scared about it. And, well, I did it. I'm so happy about that because it was such a great experience for me. Um, I know that not only talking about basketball, you know, uh, I am, I was, gr I mean, I grew up a lot. And so that's why I'm really happy about this. And so, yeah, when I think about uh, my first season, I know that it's not the, it's not the dream that I wanted to leave, you know, I mean, I was dreaming about W and it's true that this season was completely different. But anyway, I'm really happy that I was part of this WNBA season and of the team, too. Uh, Howard Magdal. Hi, Julie. Congratulations on a terrific first season. I wanted to ask you a couple of things about what you've done and where you think you fit in, both on this Fever team and in the W as a whole. You obviously took a tremendous share of ball handling duties and handled those very well. Um, but if anything, you were even more effective off the ball when it came to, you know, getting those shots and those opportunities. When you think through where you see yourself on this team and, and also in the way the coaching staff and Marianne may have talked to you about, do you see yourself as primarily a one going forward, a two going forward? You know, what what is the best role for you? I think that I'm a porn guard and I really like to organize, to do, I mean, to to help my teammates to to get ready uh, in offense or in defense. So I think that this season, what the coach was asking uh, to me was what I wanted to do. Uh, I think that no, the the thing that I need to be to get better is uh, to be like more leader. That's something that I am used to do in overseas, but that's something that I was maybe a little bit scared here uh, in the USA because I mean in the W because everything was new for me and. I was like a rookie, like uh, lots of time people were talking to me like, do you feel like you're a rookie? Yeah, for that, I feel like I, I am a rookie because, you know, it's, yeah, it was new. And so um, I know that this season was a great experience because uh, that was really, that was amazing for me to play with uh, my teammates, like with my team, to get to know them and to know how they like to play. Uh, I think that's really awesome that's something really important for next season, like to, to get to know them, to know how is the W, what difference uh, there are with the, when we play overseas, especially um, in Europe. And so, yeah, I mean, I know that, I know what I've showed uh, this season and I know what I, I didn't show. Like, I know that the first thing when you, you talk with me normally, yeah, it's true. I like to pass the ball, but I also really like to attack the basket. And this season, that was really hard for me. I don't, I, I'm still trying to know why, because I, I felt like sometimes there wasn't enough space. So I need to adapt myself, of course. And that's also something that, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about for next season. But so I know that, yeah, you've seen Julie Almond, but it's not the, the real run. Like, uh, I know that I can be really better. Uh, and I mean, on the court, outside of the court, like when I'm on the bench, like lots of things that I didn't show this season, but I, I can't wait to be next season to show that. And just a quick follow up, you, you plan to return to play for the Fever next season uh, in the W? Yeah. 100%. I mean, yeah, uh, so normally, yes, but the thing is that we, well, we don't know with the COVID, that's the first thing, and also with the national team. So normally we have a European championship and we also have the Olympic Games. So that's why I'm not sure to go, but I told them that 
yeah, I want to be part of the national team next season, but I also want to be part of the team. So we'll try to find some solutions because I know that um, if there is the, the Olympic Games, I also know that normally the W uh, will have like a break. So I know that for me, that's, that's nice. I mean, like this, I can do both. The only thing is that I have to see with the European Championship if uh, I can do something, if I can do both. That's something that I have, we have to see with the, the staff. But for sure, we were talking about that already. And yeah, I want to be part of the team next season. Thanks, George. I would, uh, apologies if I mispronounce this name here. Uh, Danny Barlavi. Uh, that was right. All right. Go ahead. Uh, hey, Julie, congrats on a great rookie season. Um, I was wondering if I could ask you a bit about your club over in Lyon, actually. Um, I know that you all are dealing with a couple of positive COVID cases. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to uh, ask you what your feelings are about that situation, how that is playing out. Yeah, so uh, just to let you know, Lyon was my uh, old club. So now I'm in Montpellier. So it's still in oh, France. apologies. No, that's right. That's okay. But no, so yeah, I have a new team. But uh, yeah, we have five cases for the five cases for the moment. And yeah, it's it's hard because, um, you know, when you went out of the bubble, when everything was like, I, I felt safe when I was in the bubble. And no, I really feel like I have to stay at home in my apartment. I have to I don't have to move a lot to do a lot of things. Like I haven't seen my teammates yet because they are positive. I mean, most of them are positive. So it's really weird and such a, yeah, weird situation. We, we don't really know uh, if we're going to play this weekend, if we, if we will play in one month, like we don't know, we, we don't know anything. And that's why I think for athletes, it's really hard because you don't know, you don't know anything. And yeah, it was hard for me in the bubble, like mentally to be like uh, so far away from my family uh, and also with the COVID, also with the bubble, with everything. But I feel like maybe it was better to be there, you know, and I'm thinking like maybe we have to do a, a bubble too here, like because it's, yeah, it's really crazy here. And uh, so especially in France and in Europe, um, especially because now it's not only my team, it's also other teams. And just because we had friendly games, you know, and that's why it started and no, but yeah, we, we don't know. We really don't know. And so it's just really hard because like I, this morning, normally I had to do um, uh to lift and then to have individual practice. But I was also waiting for my result. And so they didn't want me to practice and then they changed their mind. So every time it changed, we just have to get ready to practice or to not practice and to rest. Like, okay, for me, it's good because uh, I had the WNBA. So uh, I played a lot and I need to rest. Like, that's a good thing. But on the other hand, we don't, we don't know anything. So it's just really hard for us for the moment. Well, thank you. Welcome. Uh, Pat Boylan. Hey, Julie, I'm wondering if you can think back to 2016 when you were drafted by the Fever. It was in the third round with the 33rd pick, and I know probably years ahead of any realistic chance for you to join the WNBA. But when you think back to that day and you think back to what you were able to accomplish this year, what goes through your head? I mean, the thing that you have to know is when it was the, um, the day, I mean, the draft day, uh, I, was, I was sleeping. I didn't even uh, follow the, the draft. And it just like, it was maybe 4, 4 a.m. And I just had my phone next to me when I was sleeping. And uh, I heard like some, some noise and I was like, oh, what's happening? I knew that I was the, that was the day, I mean, the night for me. But I didn't expect that. So I was like, I was looking at my phone and I had so many notifications and then I understood. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't expect that. So that was a good surprise for me. And then um, after with my agent and then he told me like, they don't want you in the beginning. Like they want you to keep working on your side and maybe we will see next season if it's okay for you to come or not. And so I was like, well, okay, that's fine because I didn't want to come. And uh, and so, yeah, no, I, I really felt ready um, when uh, Indiana came to me and said that they want me in the team. I was like, yeah, I think that's, that's my time because I knew that before I wasn't ready, but you know that I had so many different experiences like playing overseas and with the national team. So I was really excited and ready to, to play this season. And I think that just with the experience and yeah, 
that that's just the thing the difference that and also the fact that i was still working uh, that no i i could say yeah i'm ready uh akeem do you have another one Yes, uh, Julie, you said you weren't, uh, initially you weren't expecting to play as much as you did. I would imagine that changed once uh, you guys found out that Erica Wheeler wasn't playing, but uh, what is your relationship like with Erica and heading into next season, how do you think your role will change uh, once Erica comes back? Yeah, I mean, that was really, I didn't expect that uh, because I was like thinking, yeah, I'm coming to Indiana and I'm going to be like the second Ponga that will learn a lot from Erika because I really like her style of playing. I really like her. And so with directly when I signed in Indiana, she, she sent me a message. That was the only one, I think, if I remember. Um, and so I was like, oh, we've talked a little bit. And then uh, we were playing against each other uh, in overseas. Um, and then I remember like, so I was ready to be the second Ponga and then well, something bad happened for her, so uh, I could be the first prong girl. In the beginning, I, I was like, oh, I'm not ready for that. I was really stressed about it, and I, I talked a lot with her, and that's why it was, like, easier for me when I came to Indianapolis and to, I mean, and uh, Florida to, like, be less stressful and to know that, yeah, she was just, she, she knew that I could do it. So she was like, don't stress, don't be stressed, just, just do your thing and just do your best. I'm sure that you will do great things. And, and yeah, you know, only her, hearing that from her, that was a lot for me. That mean that meant a lot for me. And, and that's why I think that helped me to, to get directly on the court ready to, to take this lead. But yeah, it was, a, it, I didn't, I really didn't expect that. And that was really hard in the beginning, but yeah, no, we'll see next season when she will be back. Of course I will be happy because, I still want to learn from her. I know that uh, it's a different style of me. Uh, she plays really different, and that's something. So that's something really interesting to to learn from her, and not only uh, basketball skills, but also to be more a leader. Like I said, I think that she will help me uh, because I really wanted a, an example. You know, uh, when I when I was coming, I was like, oh, I cannot do it alone. Like I cannot. That was really hard for me. But so. Next season we'll see, uh, but I will be really happy to play with her and to have her uh, as an example. And then we'll see, I think that we will share the, the time uh, and we will do great things together. I think that it will be um, a great, I, I mean, for the team, it will be better. It will be uh, really great to have her in the team. Like she will help a lot. So it's a good thing that when, when she will be back and for me, it will be also, good because i think that when you play 30 35 minutes it's impossible like you you will do so many you do so many mistakes that i think if you have some rest you don't do it so that's also nice if she can come and have lots of time uh howard you have another one i do julia if you look at the two person lineups indiana used this year the one that had the best net rating out of any that played regular minutes was you and Lauren Cox. I'm wondering, obviously, you know, you got to see less of Lauren in total than you expected, but how you feel like your game and her game go together so well and what you think we know about what she and the two of you together can be going forward on this Beaver team. Well, I think that Lauren uh, is a great player, a great worker. So I just think that sometimes, you know, we, we cannot control everything. And I think that's why maybe sometimes, I mean, for sure, sometimes she wanted to play more, but you know that that's something we cannot control. And I think that we can do great things together because I, so I practice with her and I know that she is smart. She knows how to, to move the ball, you know, and you know that for um, a post player, it's not always easy. So I think that she can, uh, she can be, uh, a great player and also a good thing for us for Indiana so um, I just think that when she will get more time on the court uh, it will be also easier for her uh, to get used to the rhythm and to to the to the game and um, then we'll see but I really think that I will like to play with her like also on the pick and roll um, I think that's really sometimes um, that that's something I, I will looking for 